Hi, this is Maggie. Originally I had one video that I've broken into two, so this is the second half of that video, and it explains how to measure a fifth. Hope you like it. Talk about measuring a fifth, but before I do that, I'm gonna do a quick review first of coincident partials. If we have a fifth, and I'm gonna be using F to C today. If we have an F to C fifth, the coincident partials are here and here. And if I need to review more than that, you need to go back and look at videos I've already made. The first measuring tool I would like to show you is major third, major tenth, and I have raised this note so these are easier to hear, but I'll show you that in a minute. So if I have my fifth, and it doesn't matter, I don't need to use my harmonic series or inharmonicity strips for the coincident partial mostly because it doesn't matter where it is. I'll use it if I need to, to demonstrate something visually, but for the most part, it doesn't matter where this coincident partial is. For the most part, it can get out in left field, but as long as it's close, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if it's fast or slow because here, if I'm measuring this fifth at the first coincident partial, I am measuring a 3 2 fifth. If I were to tune it pure, which we don't, but if I were to tune these coincident partials in a unison, they would be the same distance from this coincident partial. If I make my fifth wide, which I don't want to do, but if I did, I would slow down this sixth and speed up this tenth. The coincident partials from the tenth would get further apart. The coincident partials from the sixth would get closer together. That's how you know a fifth is wide. The At the first coincident partial, the major sixth beats slower than the major tenth. Now, if we tune it narrow like we want to do, we're going to bring the coincident partial from the C closer to the coincident partial from our calibration note here, the A flat, and it will beat more slowly, and or we're going to raise our F, which will put this coincident partial further away. This coincident partial will be further away from that one, and so this will beat faster than this. So we know if our sixth beats faster than our tenth, we know we have a narrow fifth. Now how narrow? Ugh. I'll get into more of that later. I'll get into a little bit of that today, but not much. So moving on, the second coincident partial, this will help us know how narrow we are. A little bit, not a lot. Um, if I have this coincident partial, now I have a minor third and a major third. And what we've done is we've taken this and moved it up an octave. This has two major intervals because it's outside of our fifth. This is now an internal measuring tool, which means this is inverted and we've talked about inverting intervals so a major sixth becomes a minor third and it's now a narrow interval this is ma this is a wide interval this is a narrow interval this is still wide I had to rearrange all the strips these strips are set up a little differently so I can give you a good visual always remember this is not completely in reality it's just a really good way to explain it in my opinion so, I've rearranged my strips so I can get this to come out right. I have a fifth that is a little narrow because my the partial from my C is a little flat of the partial from my F. All right, it's a little narrow right now. That means this partial is closer to this one than this one is. So, my minor third in this case, these partials are further apart. My minor third will beat faster then my major third, because those partials are closer together. That means my fifth is narrow. If I go the opposite way, if I raise C and or lower F, if I raise C, I'm gonna increase the difference between these two partials, the distance, and they're gonna be faster. And if I lower F, I'm gonna decrease the distance between these two, and they're going to beat more slowly. Now, if I get past pure and go the opposite direction, this minor third will beat more slowly than the major third and I know I have a wide fifth. Now something that can happen with these fifth, if you notice with my partials here, I can line up this partial 
But this one isn't quite lined up. If I line up this partial, this one's not lined up. Now I'm going to get a major extreme here. This is going to be ridiculous. Um, but it will, it will show you what I'm talking about. On a good quality piano, let me go back. On a good quality piano with low inharmonicity, it's going to be like these two strips. This is going to be very close together. I can get my fifth narrow at both coincident partials and it not be too crazy. I'll show you what I mean by crazy in a second. So the distance between here is greater than the distance from here, but it's still not too far. I can make it pure at the first coincident partial and still have it a little narrow at the second. You can do that on pretty much any piano, but on a high quality piano, it's very hard to hear that. On a poor quality piano, or a poor scale piano, or a piano with high inharmonicity, you're going to have a much greater difference between these partials. So I can line up these two partials to be pure, but I'm ridiculously narrow at this next one. And if I line these up to be pure, I'm wide at the second one. I can, this is an extreme. If, I'm, I, if I want to make it narrow at both partials, I'm so wide, I'm so narrow here, it's almost unusable. So sometimes on some pianos, you have to make it pure or close to pure at the first coincident partial to stay narrow at the second coincident partial. The reason that's important to me is I tune a lot of high inharmonicity pianos. And if I, if I don't have, um, this is not tuned right now. If I don't have a big enough, a small enough difference between here and here, with my beat rates, it's really difficult to tune. So this is a piano with somewhat high inharmonicity and I have slowed down, I've raised these two notes, they're not in tune, I've raised them so you can hear the beats more easily. So here's the first coincident partial measurement. It's very slow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here's the second one. So that's fast. So right now, this is testing wide. Now I'm going to measure the second coincident partial. Let me get my head in here. Yeah, I was right. So it's a little faster than here. So this piano is measuring narrow at the second coincident partial, but wide at the first coincident partial. Now, is that where I want to leave it? I don't know. It depends. I might make this one pure and still work with this one. I don't know. But at the difference in speed here, is significant enough that if I were to make this narrow, uh, this would be unusable. Uh, in fact, I will show you. Um, I got rid of the video of me tuning <clears throat> to save time. I think I've got that close to equal beating. When I go back and listen to the video, it'll sound different, and I'll say, oh no, it's this way or that way, but this is still, it's kind of close. Let's see where my fifth is. See, that's too slow to use. See, that's ridiculous. So what I would do is make this close to pure, or even a little wide and I would just I would work with my second coincident partial to get this comfortable for two reasons number one we have a wound string down here and I'm going to talk about that in a future video as to why that matters it's too much to get into right now um, but I am going to be setting a temperament from here to here and this is important to me when I set my temperament I need those to be closer together so that that fifth will be a little bit wider if I set a temperament in this piano so I hope that is helpful, and if you have any questions, comments, requests, corrections, anything like that, uh, please comment below or email me at maggie at the butlerschool.org. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. And I hope you got something out of this. Everyone happy tuning. Bye-bye.